What's up, everybody? Matt with Texas Edge Home Inspections. Today, we're going to conduct a little experiment. Sometimes I put out some videos of me crawling through an attic and I'll see a separated dryer duct. And you'll see dryer lint just kind of scattered all over the attic. And people will comment on this oftentimes. And some of this I feel like is a joke, but some of it I believe is serious. That's why we're addressing this today. People will say, hey, that's just added insulation. Well, there are some major differences between insulation and dryer lint, and we're going to expose some of those today. Now, one way to talk about the differences between these two materials is to talk about the R value of them. However, I don't have any way of measuring the R value of dryer lint, uh, and I'm not even going to mess with you. Probably look that up on the internet and figure that out. I venture to say that they're probably uh, relatively close to the same. However, the one thing that we're going to focus on today is flammability. So as you can see, I have a few items laid out here that we're going to be uh, using in our test today. Uh, one, I've got a, an additional phone here that I'm going to use for uh, keeping time. I've got my aim and flame lighter. And then we've got three bags of material here. This first one is fiberglass blow-in insulation. And so we're going to have that. We also have a bag of dryer lint and we have a bag of sawdust. And we are going to Try to set these on fire and compare how long it takes for each one of them to burn. Additionally, for safety, I also have my fire extinguisher here. Now, this is a fire extinguisher that I always have in my garage, but I just brought it over here. I don't anticipate this fire getting out of control, uh, but we always want to be on the safe side. For added safety, I've gone ahead and relocated from my garage to out here in my driveway. Again, I don't anticipate this fire to get out of control, but I'd rather have it over here in the open air. Also, opted for matches for dramatic effect instead of the aim and flame lighter. I feel like dropping a match in here is going to better tell the story, so we'll try that and see what happens. The first material that we're going to burn is going to be sawdust. This is a bag of sawdust that I pulled whenever I uh, was using my planer. It, it creates this great sawdust. I actually use this to start fires. And so we're going to take this first and just dump it right in. Okay, all of it. There we go. And I'm going to have my timer here set and ready for me to hit start. And when I drop this match, I'm going to hit start on the timer. So let's see here. Okay. Ready and that did not work. Okay, let's try another match. Too much wind out here. All right, now I've got my match ready. I've got my sawdust. I got my timer. I'm going to drop the match. I'm going to hit start on the timer and see where we end up. Well, I mean, that didn't take long. That's pretty much immediately caught fire. All right, let's let that burn out. All right, so as anticipated, the sawdust went up in flames immediately. Literally no time. Once fire hit that, all of it was just burning to no end. I anticipate that the dryer lint is going to have a very similar outcome, but I've gone ahead and cleared out my pan here and uh, cleaned it out. And we're going to add some of this dryer lint in there and see how quickly it goes up in flames. So I'm actually not going to put that much. Uh, I don't think it's going to take much to get my point across. And so let's take some of this out of here. All right, that'll do it. And get my timer ready, get my match ready, and let's see what happens. Well, you can see we've got a much similar situation with the dryer lint as we had with the sawdust. It pretty much goes up in flames immediately. There's no sense in even starting a timer. Uh, it's not about how long it takes for it to catch fire. It catches fire the second fire hits it. So yeah, as you can see, dryer lint uh, and sawdust, both very flammable, about equal in comparison. All right. So the third and final thing we're going to attempt to burn here is some blow-in fiberglass insulation. I pulled this out of my attic. So I guess essentially my home is less energy efficient now just so I can show you this comparison. Anyway, I think I'll live. All right, let's put some of this in here. About the same amount as the dryer lint here. Just a big, nice pile here. All right. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to light a match. We're going to start the timer. We're going to see how long it takes for this stuff to catch on fire.
you can see like the, the flame was about to go out on the match and so i held it there for a little while while the wood caught but uh got nothing happening okay the flame's out but i still have my aim and flame here so let's give it a little bit of help Relight the match if we can, and if not, I'm just trying to get some of this insulation to light. As you can see, nothing's happening. That is the difference that I wanted to point out today. So while dryer lint may be sufficient in holding in temperature or energy in your house, its ability to catch flame is the problem. It is not insulation. This is insulation. And the reason why we have this in our attics is because it is it resists fire and it does a great job of insulating our home. So what I really want to emphasize today is that a separated dryer duct in your attic is a fire hazard. Of course, it becomes increasingly more a fire hazard if you have gas fired appliances around. But that dryer lint can catch fire in an instant, as you've seen by this demonstration here today. Issues like a separated dryer duct and many other things are things that are high on our radar as home inspectors to try to find whenever we do these inspections for you. I hope this demonstration helped a lot of people. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next inspection.